Oh, hey there and hello from the candy wallpapered upstairs hallway of the dollhouse for another reading from the secret language of birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for July 25th, the day of quixotic exploits. That's right. Hey, is it July 25th and it's your birthday today? Well, if it is, I just want to extend you a heartfelt Happy birthday. That's right. But hey, for everyone else who's just joining us out of curiosity, uh, well, I'm going to say hello and welcome. Hope you enjoy yourself. All right. Hey, before we get started here, we like to roll us some dice. That's right. Why? Well, this is the Diecast Birthday Cast, and so we roll some dice. That's right. It is the namesake. We must live up to it. No, don't. We? All right. Oh, what do we get today here? Little snake eyes, a one and a one for the two. One in the uh, where was it? Oops, a two, a one in the crown and a one in the root for a two. That's right, you chakra folks, for new agey chakra folks, a one in the crown, one in the root. What does all that mean? Well, I can't explain the root and the chakra stuff, but I can explain a little synchronicity for you if you hadn't heard. Well, let's just. Let's think of an example here, shall we? Okay, let's say, you know, life's just taking a little bit of a humdrum turn for you. You're down in the doldrums, say, right? And you, you just, you feel like you've lost a little bit of that childlike wonder. Well, that happens from time to time. So what do you do? Well, you heard someone tell you, you should roll some dice, a little synchronicity. You're like, oh, come on. Well, you know what? You woke up this morning and he was down as ever. So what'd you do? You rolled some dice, that's right. And you got a, a one and a one for a two, that's right. So, you know, you're heading off to work and, ah, uh, you forgot breakfast, right? Shoot, well, there's, a, there's old McDonald's there. Oh, you hate doing it, but uh, you roll on through the drive through don't you? But, hey, breakfast is over. I guess you got out a little late there. Well, all right, I guess I'll get me a number one. I think that's the Big Mac. Yeah, I don't know, maybe number two. That's right. Number two, you know, you like to go with your number one because the Big Mac seems like the healthiest option. But you rolled a two, so you roll a two. Well, little beknownst to you on the inside of that McDonald's with old Henry Legbottom, let's call him. Well, he's just itching to get fired. But, you know, his his dad just won't let him hear the end of it if he gets himself fired. So he, Or if he quits, rather. He wants to quit. Let me, let me revise all of that. He wants to quit, but his dad just won't. He won't abide by him quitting. He's got to get fired. That's right. So what does old Henry Longbottom do, boy? He says if he has to make up just one more number two, he doesn't like that one. I'm not sure what number two is, but let's say it's a chicken sandwich. And he don't like no mayonnaise. He can do a little bit with the secret the sauce there on the Big Mac because it's got an orange color that he likes but that mayonnaise man it just makes him sick to his stomach and so on this chicken sandwich if I have to do one more more I'm gonna make him make I'm gonna make him fire me that's right so what happens? Oh, we're gonna run number two, number two right on there. That's right. You order your chicken sandwich you one and a one for two and old Henry leg bottom I think I called him he's done. So what does he do? He's gonna insult the next customer that's you and what's he gonna do? Well, he's gonna put your chicken sandwich in a Happy Meal box. That's right. Ooh, what an insult, right? Well, so what happens? Uh, I'm waiting on my number two. I don't know. I'm, I'm just missing out on that childlike wonder. And what do they do? They hand you the old McDonald's Happy Meal with your new chicken sandwich. And guess what? Turns out you like that chicken sandwich if that's the number two. Yeah, whatever the number two is, it's your new favorite sandwich. You're just like, oh, and I got my childlike sense of wonder back. Hey, maybe even there's a toy in there. Not that you want that, but hey, it brings back that childlike wonder. And there's just a little ancillary there. Well, old Henry Legbottom, you gave the manager a compliment. You said old Henry Legbottom made your day. Not that you know his name, but old Henry Legbottom just made your day. And you know what? They turn old Henry Legbottom into the manager because he had the foresight and the other manager was on the outs. That's right, because he was just firing folks willy-nilly or something. Or maybe he turned the number two into a three and, and the old franchisees, they don't they don't abide by them kind of shenanigans. So old Henry Legbottom got made manager. And you know what old Henry Legbottom happened to Henry Legbottom now? Because you ordered the number two? Well, he found a new lease on life. That's right. And so you just, uh, that's synchronicity, baby. You follow those numbers. They make the universe align. And all you got to do is just kind of follow the, the primrose path there. But in any event, so that's been synchronicity for you. All right. 
Let's dive in to your birthday read, all right? July 25th, the day of quixotic exploits. Those born on July 25th have a romantic yearning to see far-off lands and accomplish imaginative deeds. Unfortunately, their dreams are often difficult to realize. Regardless of practicality, most July 25 people act on their desires, achieving either a surprising success or perhaps a more predictable mixed result. Their idealism is generally a bit ahead of the reality factor. Even when July 25 people fail, they may feel the experience of having tried to be self-validating. Many of those born on this day agree that it is not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. And that is most important. Thus, July 25 people are primarily interested in motives for actions, and rather than focusing on how successful a person is, are likely to judge how pure his or her intentions are. Fair enough. They apply these standards to themselves as well. Thus, parents born on this day may not be as concerned with their children's grades as with how hard their children tried and with the sincerity they approach their tasks. Danger can also attract those born on July 25, and when threatened with it, they rarely back down. Confronting issues boldly is typically of those born on this day, who prefer to take criticism directed against them head-on, rather than deflect it through subtlety or the use of third parties. And if July 25 people know in their heart that they are right, well, they can stand up to almost any kind of abuse, even torture. Though July, 20, though July 25 people rather have a code of honor which they hold dear, they generally refrain from demanding that others adhere to the same principles. It is this personal philosophy of living which they strive to embody in both deed and in word. Honor is a god to July 25 people who would rather suffer terribly than break their word even once. Or break their word once given, rather. Thus, highly admi this, hireable, admi this highly admirable trait can cause them grief in an imperfect world and at times put them at a severe disadvantage. They must learn to be as forgiving of their own transgressions as they are accepting of others's. And the old apostrophe in the S there. Thus, born on this day, of us, those born on this day, rather, are subject to great mood swings. But uh, due to their inner strength, generally keep a firm grip on themselves. Indeed, the cultivation of self-control can take on the nature of an obsession for July 25 people. Their approach to life is not unlike that of a samurai warrior who's fearlessly or who fearlessly defends honor without regard to financial gain or ego massage. Remaining grounded in and aware of the present moment, well, seeing the value of everyday experience is known deeply only by the most highly evolved of July 25 people. It may require years of growth and experience before those born in this day will turn their energy away from an imaginative tilting with windmills to observe with a cold eye what is happening right in front of them. Yet they will not and should not ever lose their love of adventure and their romantic bent towards accomplishing great exploits. And in this, they are an inspiration to friends, family, and children. Well, all right, what did I write there? In the notes there, right about the breakdown. Had a little bit of stuffiness going on there about three quarters through the reeds, messing me all up, getting me distracted. Must try to fight through it. We must persevere like the old July 25 folks do, right? Even torture, said. All right, what did I write? Do you have dreams that are difficult to realize? I'm right there with you, but keep on pressing, baby. All right, regardless the result. That's what I say. Achieving a dream is tantamount, tantamount to realized magic and all the more mystical if the dream wasn't rooted in so-called reality. That's right. I'd argue that what made Don Quixote, Don Quixote rather so enduring in the first place, right? That he had a dream and he followed it. And in that honor in his heart, he was after it, even though everybody thought he was crazy. With his little exploits there. They were pretty funny if you've read the first half. <clears throat> anyway, here nor there. 
that and his coming from a place of honor. Like I said, oh, I got to hit myself. People want to fault it in their unending frustration, but they can't in a way because it's so deeply rooted in the soil of endearing heart and honesty. And if I'm to lean a little idealistic myself in that viewpoint, that's right. <clears throat> I also appreciate this libertarian uh, approach to not demanding others adhere to your own principles. You just hold yourself to it. And I like that. People just need to mind their own business in a way. And perhaps because you realize it won't work for them. That could be part of it too. So you don't give them a hard time about it. So how about them mood swings that it mentioned, right? I'd say it's part and parcel with realizing dreams that seem out of reach, but chasing after them regardless. You're going to hit those walls, baby. You're going to hit those breakaheads, the breaking the seawall there before you get on to the beach of your desire, if, if you like. Okay, just keep pressing through, all right? Sometimes I reach that point where I want to explode with frustration. I call it reaching the threshold. If you feel like the seams of the boiler are going to explode, right? It's just the metal hasn't had time to expand with the temperature there, right? Even if it was a slow build. That, that cast iron, it takes a while, baby. That's right. I'm not a metallurgist, but I'm assuming. It's also a test of your personal resolve, okay? And reaching those limits and staying with it. Well, sometimes you need to flex that muscle you got to show that grit you know we have to prove it to ourselves day in and day out that we can do it even though we know we've done it in the past we know we got to know we're up to it today and you may have done it yesterday but you gotta do it at all times that's what i wrote here which i myself often fail to do so anyhow anyhow keep pressing all right you have to keep earning the recognition as an inspiration in others eyes Past accomplishments are past accomplishments. Earn yours today. Earn your today. That's right. And I think that was all I wrote for the breakdown. All right. So let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Ooh, this congestion there. <laughs> Those born on the 25th day of the month are ruled by the number seven. Two plus five equals seven. Oh, we got part of the number, didn't we? With the two and the two, if you weren't tracking, uh, all right, if you weren't tracking that. And by the planet, Neptune. Therefore, because of the influence of the sun, which rules Leo, and July 25, people have a strong sun-Neptune connection. And this means they may be prone to mental confusion, as well as being swept off their feet by romantic illusions. Those ruled by the number seven traditionally like change and travel, fitting in well with their yearning of July 25 people from faraway places. The number 25 is often associated with danger and, again, particularly relevant for July 25 people. All right, what did I write in the notes for your numbers here? Prone to being swept off your feet and romantic illusion. And how is what I wrote. Let me tell you a something now. See, I know that feeling well, however... I'm not ruled by the sun or Neptune. No, Mr. Uranus over here, and I can't remember the plant. You know, I can't remember the the card there. Anyhow, <clears throat> so good luck with all that, especially if it affects you a little bit more than it would say myself. So, uh, good luck with that. All right. Imagine a more intense. I can't imagine what a more intense feeling like that is like. All right. As to the number twenty-five, it mentioned in here that there's a particular danger associated with it. Well. I did a little research because I didn't know what that meant. I didn't see anything here in the book, though I didn't necessarily look too hard, but uh, <laughs> that could have been at the beginning or something. Anyhow, I, re I found that it's interesting what I found here on the internet there. <clears throat> I found it was referred to as the spiritual workshop. The number 25 there. It conveys knowledge through experience, depth of personality. And many people with this number... Well, they were never allowed to be children because of too many responsibilities. I think that must be why I drilled down on the old Happy Meal story. It looks like I put it in the right place. All right. True or not, it sure sounded interesting to me, and maybe that's something to consider. Maybe the number five applied to you for one of those reasons. Now, I don't know what the danger is. I, I wish it would have said a little bit, made it a little more clear, so that we could make it relevant for you. They said you need to be mindful of well i assume they said you need to be mindful of it anyhow let's move on to your tarot i'm getting all over the place here tonight. that's all right though we're having fun it's your birthday we gotta have some fun for you though the seventh card of the major arcana 
is the chariot, which shows a triumphant figure moving through the world and manifesting his physical presence in a dynamic way. And the card may be interpreted to mean that no matter how narrow or precarious the correct path, one must continue on. That's right. And the good side of this card posits success, talent, and efficiency. And the bad side suggests a dictatorial attitude and a poor sense of direction. All right, what did I write down for your tarot? You got to keep pressing on. That's right. We're going to drill down on keep on pressing on, aren't we? <laughs> yes, sir or ma'am. That's right. Even if you have a poor sense of direction, you know, provided you're lost in the desert. See, in that case, however, you're probably better off staying in one place. That's right. I want to say I read that somewhere. Con to conserve your energy. That's right. And so the people can find you. Uh, but take that with a grain of sand. That comes from the same source that says to eat a cigarette if you've got worms. That's right. So you are effectively poisoning yourself if you do that. I don't know, but anyhow, if you get some worms and you're out in the woods and you have a cigarette, you know how to get rid of them. Not that I'm recommending that, but that is a method, apparently. Okay, <laughs> that was your tarot, because they didn't give us nothing, so I had to work some of my magic in there. All right, let's move on to your health. All right. Don't read the notes first, guy. All right, the quixotic personality of July 25 people demands... Co constancy in order to maintain both physical and mental health. Regular rest and mealtimes go a long way in promoting a calm state of being. A stabilized diet, one which avoids highly stimulating dishes in favor of grains and earthy foods, for example, can help keep them grounded on their feet. All mind-expanding drugs should be avoided by those born on this day. And a regular regimen of energetic, physical exercise, vigorous jogging, or calisthenics will burn off excess energy and rid the body of harmful toxins. Like the nicotine you got from eating that cigarette there to get rid of them worms, ostensibly. For some born on this day, team sports can satisfy a need for heroic exploits. Is that you, Don Quixote? Is this me? That's right. Don Quixote. Yeah, go read that book if you got the time. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's see what I wrote in the notes. And don't eat cigarettes. That's the first thing I did. If that wasn't clear. All right. Unless you have worms and no money for health care. <laughs> and that's according to the Army Field Manual. Not me. So lodge your complaints there. I said don't do it. And also avoid your mind expanding drugs, apparently. And eat grains for some reason. Once again, not cigarettes yeah dude that wasn't very good notes for health hey sometimes we just gotta inflex a little levity right that childlike wonder keep curious baby have fun it is your birthday all right let's move on to some advice okay concentrate more on the present moment try to be here rather than there pay attention to what others around you are saying and doing be more accepting of yourself continue to reach for the stars but with your feet firmly planted on the ground that's right Ooh, i like that one that's some good advice there be present yes sir or ma'am okay windmills are fun but a distraction so tilt in moderation that's right curiosity and childlike wonder are still admirable and sometimes necessary especially if you weren't allowed that earlier in life. That's right. Number 25, it is a danger, apparently. Okay, let's move on to your meditation. Bubble gum may not mean much to you until you get it on your shoe. Once again, bubble gum may not mean much to you until you get it on your shoe. What's this I wrote here in the, in the book itself? But at least it isn't dog scat. That's right. Glass half full. That's it. We only do that here on the Diecast Birthday Cast for you there. Give you that perspective you need, that down-to-earth perspective. <laughs> it's that Uranian, uh, what do you call it, explosive and erratic uh, mood set that I got going there. Whoa, that's right. Hey, we do it here for you. All right, okay. Where am I at here? I've lost all sense of direction there. Yeah, that's right. Your strengths and your weaknesses. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths, you're imaginative, you're idealistic, 
and you're honorable. And your weaknesses, you're judgmental, struggling, and unrealistic. Ooh, is that you, Don Quixote? <laughs> right, let's see here. Let's move on to those born on this day. So we know what company July 25 people are in. Give us a little snapshot. Maybe we can append that personality that they've described here onto some pop cultural icons. Usually there's not a lot of people we recognize, but hey, maybe you get interested in people born on this day. So we start off with Omar Khayyam, a Persian poet, mathematician, and astronomer. We have Thomas Eakins, a 19th the 20th century naturalist, painter, and a teacher. We also have Walter Payton, a football running back, and an NFL all-time leader in total yards gain. Also an MVP, seven-time All-Pro. We have Arthur James Balfour, British Lord, statesman, Prime Minister, and Foreign Secretary of Balfour Declaration, created the Jewish state. We have David Belasco, a stage actor and the theater uh, producer. We have Josephine Tay, who was a Scottish mystery novelist for the Daughters of Time, apparently. A playwright and her pen names, Elizabeth McIntosh and Gordon DeVoe. We also have Luis Brown, the first test tube baby. That's interesting. We have Maxfield Parrish, the uh, painter and the romantic illustrator. We have Annie Ross was a British jazz singer. Uh, Lambert Hendricks and Ross was also an actress. We have Walter Brennan. Oh, the sheriff. We didn't get the marshal. That's Walter Brennan there from Rio Bravo. That's right. Film actor. I think he won an Oscar too. Maybe not for the Rio, not from the Rio Bravo uh, role, but something. Anyway, moving on, we have Joseph Roseman, the violinist, the Budapest String Quartet. Uh, Primarius. We have John Hodges, Johnny Hodges rather, a jazzy alto soprano saxophonist. We have Don Ellis, the jazz trumpeteer, composer and band leader. We also have Raul Ruiz, a Chilean TV film director of The Sailors, Three Crowns. He fled to Europe after Allende's overthrow. We have Stanley Dancer, a harness a racing driver and a four-time Hamiltonian winner, trainer, and a driver of Triple Crown winners in trotting and pacing. I guess it's horse racing. I was assuming it was... Yeah, I didn't know what harness racing was. I thought it was some kind of special car. Anyway, all right. Florence Estwistle was a, a celebrity patri uh, portrait painter. Photographer, rather. <laughs> Celebrity portrait photographer. We have Estelle Getty, a TV actress, and Sophia of the Golden Girls fame, also of Golden Palace. We have Eric Hoffer, was a philosopher, Midge Dector, a politi political activist, and Janet Margolin, a film actress. Only a couple in there that I recognize, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. And sometimes we like to make famous the people that would otherwise get recognized. That's right. Well, hey, I think we've reached the end there. So once again, this has been July 25th, the day of quixotic exploits. And if today was your birthday, I just want to say happy birthday again. That's right. And this has been The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers. Uh, I got a affiliate link for this book down in the description. If you want to pick you up your own copy, let it grace your coffee table and uh, help entertain that company when they come over. You'll be up. Uh, doing me a service by shopping through that link supporting the channel and i appreciate it if you do but otherwise this is about you this is your birthday and so that's why i do this here so i want to wish you a happy birthday for everyone else who joined us i hope you enjoyed yourself and you join us for your birthday read. all right stretch out those so as muscles nobody likes tight hip flexes take care of your cuticles nobody likes unesthetically pleasing nails and you have you a happy birthday take care of yourself yeah